Hi, today I'll tell you how I came to invent a new type of mouse. It all started because of a simple but annoying problem. My regular mice kept breaking. Regardless of the price, whether cheap or expensive, they would eventually stop working. The first truly comfortable mouse I bought was the first series of the Logitech MX. A great mouse, but after just a year, the left button stopped working properly. It felt like a waste to throw away a $100 mouse. It turned out that the problem was with the buttons themselves. They wear out over time and start to stick. So I simply started replacing them. When I switched to the MX2S, the situation repeated. But this time I found button modules that could be replaced without soldering. If you need it, I'll leave a link in the description. In the end, I learned to repair mice myself and started thinking, why not create my own mouse with quality buttons and a comfortable shape? I began analyzing what I liked and didn't like in existing models. For example, in the MX2S, I like the comfort and convenient placement of the buttons for scrolling pages. Also, the scroll wheel for adjusting volume. That's something I definitely want to add to my mouse. But there were also downsides. The biggest one was the micro switches. They are designed for 10 to 30 million clicks, but their lifespan shortens with each strong press. In my mouse, I want to use switches with a longer lifespan, where the pressure is transferred through a spring. This would reduce the risk of breaking. There are three types of mouse grips. Claw grip, the hand is tense, control is precise and quick. But with this grip, it's unpleasant to touch the edges of the plastic and rubber with the pinky finger, as they stick out half a millimeter. It becomes uncomfortable to use after two to four hours. In the MX, the transitions are smoother, but they use a metal insert, which looks nice but feels unpleasant. Finger grip. Control is also precise. Fingers are relaxed, but the ring finger is forced to touch the scroll wheel, which also causes discomfort after a few hours. Palm grip. The most comfortable grip. All fingers rest. Control is not as fast, but it's the most relaxed. As you can tell, the problem is the same and even worse. Now two fingers suffer. In my technical requirements, I wrote that the ergonomic shape needs to be changed, and the scroll wheel should be moved to a different place. Another drawback is the large space needed to move the mouse. This is especially noticeable when you need to move a file from one screen to another. Here, a trackball helps. The hand remains stationary, and you can simply rotate the ball for control. But the trackball also has its downsides. It's too slow for those who need speed. Using a track point is also relatively convenient, but the downside is that the joystick is very small and holding it is not that comfortable, though overall the control method is good. After all these thoughts, I took some clay and made a mold that fit perfectly in my hand. In Blender, I created a model and spent several weeks refining it. It took 12 versions to achieve the perfect shape. I placed the scroll under the thumb and increased the tilt angle compared to the MX, which turned out to be even more comfortable for the hand. Now the mouse needed to stay stationary. I had the idea to use a joystick and mount the mouse on it. I needed something to keep the hand stationary, so I tried using a joystick connected via Arduino. Unfortunately, the control was inconvenient due to the dead zone and the need to apply force for movement. Then I decided to use a gyroscope, attaching it with rubber bands. This made the control smooth and pleasant, but the cursor speed was still low. I solved this problem by adjusting the cursor speed based on the tilt angle. The greater the angle, the faster the cursor. However, reality didn't match expectations. It was uncomfortable to control the mouse. The hand was used to moving slightly differently with some rotation, which wasn't possible with this control method. I had to abandon this idea. The mouse shape is excellent, and maybe someday I'll make a classic mouse from it, but not now. I returned to the joystick idea because I liked how easily and precisely it allowed movement. I designed a new platform, printed it on a 3D printer, and assembled the device. It took quite a few iterations to achieve a comfortable layout and shape for the buttons. During testing, I ran into problems. My hand was uncomfortable due to the height of the device. I added a wrist rest, which significantly improved comfort. But the ergonomics needed more work, which took several iterations. I printed it on a resin printer since the parts come out much more pleasant to the touch. But that wasn't all. The control sometimes got annoying because the cursor would jerk for no reason. Actually, the reason was that the springs were too stiff. Another significant downside was that when the joystick was released, it would wobble. I replaced the springs with rubber bands, and the control became much smoother and more pleasant, but the cursor jerking issue remained. 
Another significant problem was controlling the scroll. Due to the large dead zone, its movement was too large, and at the center, it didn't react to scrolling at all. So I had to get rid of the joystick and implement scrolling with a gyroscope. At some point, this became a nightmare, because they interfered with each other. And while dealing with this issue, I kept forgetting to address smaller problems that arose. I'll show you how many iterations I went through to reach a fully functional device. Under the joystick, I placed the middle button, which is usually located under the scroll. I also added a sponge plate underneath, which significantly reduced joystick wobble when released abruptly. I replaced four rubber bands with two. This made the tension more even, and the control became even more pleasant. I printed the panel and other elements on a resin printer and assembled it. And this was exactly what I wanted to achieve from the beginning. Smooth and precise control. The cursor is controlled very easily and smoothly something my regular mouse could never come close to. Scrolling is on a completely different level. It's incredibly smooth and responsive. The best part is that you don't need to spin the scroll wheel. You just move the joystick in the desired direction. Another great solution was placing the middle button, which is usually under the scroll wheel, beneath the joystick. This is a more logical place for this button. Now to move an object in a 3D program, you simply press the joystick and move it. Overall, the device is very convenient. The buttons are spread out like on a trackball, with standard buttons below and forward-backward buttons above. In the front, there's scrolling and volume control, and above that, two buttons for copy and paste. They can be reassigned to any other functions. Two weeks have passed since I started using the device. In that time, I've made a few improvements to the design. I changed the shape of the volume control knob. In the old version, the sharp edges made it uncomfortable to touch, but the new version features softer lines, which greatly improves the tactile experience. Additionally, I reduced the joystick's height and increased the surface area, making control significantly more comfortable and precise. Now I'm ready to share my impressions. Using the device feels a lot like working with a mouse, but the hand remains stationary, as it does with a trackball. For the first few days, both the new controller and my usual mouse sat on my desk. But by the third day, I had fully transitioned to the new device. Cursor movement is now much more precise, especially when working with small elements. Scrolling also turned out to be smoother and highlights just how inconvenient a traditional scroll wheel can be. Besides the hardware modifications, I developed software for assigning additional functions to the buttons and adjusting cursor and scroll sensitivity. I'll be posting all the code on GitHub and a link to it along with all necessary materials will be in the description. You'll be able to build your own device and for a small fee, download the 3D model. For those who don't want to assemble it themselves, there will be an option to purchase a ready-made version and support the project on Kickstarter. The campaign link will also be in the description. Thank you for watching.